Hey everybody, I'm Diane Gale and I am the author of the blog SustainableSlowLiving.com and today I want to talk to you about slow living hobbies. There are so many things that vie for our attention on a daily basis. Um, sometimes it feels like there's things vying for our attention minute by minute, but um, it's important that we learn to schedule activities for ourselves or um, just step away from our busyness and engage in activities that bring a balance to our life, right? Mentally, physically, and spiritually. And as a person who practices slow living, I like to think that I'm pretty good at doing that. I am far from perfect. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty flawed, um, just like everyone else. But it is something that I consider. It is something that I intentionally try to implement in my life. And today, um, I want to share with you some of the slow living hobbies that I really enjoy um, in hopes that they might inspire you to um, take them up yourself or just inspire you to intentionally um, immerse yourself in a hobby that you love because everyone's interests are going to be different so you might not find my hobbies very appealing but hopefully my passion for them um, my zest for bringing these kind of um, intentional um, being in the moment activities into your life to slow things down and improve your overall well-being will draw you in and um, refuel a flame for your own hobbies, ignite a flame for your own hobbies, or even just, you know, inspire you to delve uh, further, deeper, more often into the things that you love. So the first hobby that I want to share with you is planning your garden for the spring. This is an activity that is best done in the winter because in the winter, you know, a gardener doesn't have a lot of things that they can really do unless you know, they have a greenhouse if they're in that kind of climate um, or, you know, you can keep a greenhouse anywhere. So if they have a greenhouse, there still is gardening activities for them to do. Um, and of course, you know, you can grow your house plants indoors. There's other things that you can grow indoors. But for the most part, gardening is hands off in the winter. And I love dreaming about my garden. Now, I have only ever had three gardens in my whole lifespan, and that is not nearly enough. I have not had the good fortune of having a space where I could really have them. And I guess in the years that I did, I just, it wasn't something that I prioritized. But it is something that I prioritize now because um, I love it. I think it's really good for your health and I'm a huge proponent of the slow food movement and sustainability and I want to produce my own food. So this year um, I'm not sure what kind of space I'm going to have but still I'm able to engage in garden planning in the winter. Um, I'm shopping for seeds, I'm shopping for seeds that um, primarily can be grown in containers because I figure that I'll be able to do at least some of that no matter where I am. Growing herbs is kind of a no-brainer so I've been learning a little bit about that. Um, I grew some already, but I would like to learn even more about growing them. I grew most of them in raised beds, so I want to look at growing them in individual containers because, again, that's something that I know that I can do. But you can seed shop. You can plan your garden beds. And even if you already have garden beds and you're gardening every year, you can plan a few new spaces. You can plan to put in a trellis or just anywhere that you can put in a container or a little raised bed you can plan to expand winter is the perfect time to do that for me the most important things to plan for this year are to be able to garden um, no matter what kind of space that I have 
So that's why I'm looking at um, methods that I can do that with. I've been looking at uh, straw bale gardening. It's a great time to learn about gardening. Um, I've been looking at um, uh, no dig beds because those are things that you can do uh, without disturbing someone's property. So no matter where I am, I should be able to do those things. And um, no matter where you're at in your gardening journey, no matter what you're doing, this is a great time to immerse yourself. And I don't know about you, but when I get lost in a seed catalog, that is all I'm focused on. So the rest of the world just kind of melts away and that is the point of a hobby, to be in the moment planning the garden is a great hobby for the winter because it puts you in the moment it kind of absorbs you and dreaming of the garden just dreaming of the garden is enough to take you out of your busy day and into another place um, a place where the regular thoughts that are hitting you all day long every day aren't there because you're absorbed in something you enjoy and the next hobby that I want to talk to you about um, that really lines up with slow living and is perfect for the winter um, is sewing. I love sewing. When I was younger, I was an avid sewer. I, well, avid, avid might be a strong word. Um, for several years, I made a lot of my own clothing. So I guess you would call that avid, I don't know. Anyway, back when I was doing that, <clears throat> the people that were around me, the people that were in my circle, kind of looked down on sewing because it was associated with poverty, right? It's not that inexpensive to sew anymore. You can pick up material at yard sales and thrift stores and so you can sew inexpensively that way. But when you go into a fabric store, it's kind of an expensive hobby. But anyway, at the time that I was doing it uh, it was so ironic because like my friends I was still in school and well then and then just freshly out of school and my friends the people that knew me they would never have dreamed of making their own clothes because they would have looked down on that but yet when I would come in in an outfit that I had made that they loved they would always want to know where I got it, right? That's what teenagers do. You want to emulate your friends. So they wanted to know where I got it. And when I made it myself, they were disappointed, not because um, they looked down on the hobby, but because they couldn't get an outfit like that for themselves. And they loved it. And I love bohemian clothing, flowy, um, uh, colorful clothing. When I lived in Humboldt County, California, there were a lot of people who made handmade clothing and they made all of the stuff that I love. But in Maine and here in Pennsylvania, I can't find those things. So this year I'm looking at really getting involved with sewing again. And I don't know how much time I'm going to have because my life is in flux a little bit now. So I set my goal very small. And that's also important because you don't want to overwhelm yourself or feel like a failure when you don't meet your goal. So my goal is to make one beautiful bohemian outfit that I love by the end of the winter. And I'm hoping to get in a fat quarter um, infinity scarf too, because that should be pretty simple and they're really beautiful. You can watch social media and you will likely see them on Facebook or Instagram. When I make them, I have to warn you my Instagram account right now, I don't know, I can't get into it. And Instagram is out of whack completely. So we'll see how that all goes. And then um, one of my ongoing slow living hobbies that I engage in all year, um, all the time, uh, almost daily, is cooking. Winter is a perfect time to learn a new cooking style. It's funny because I don't get as excited about cooking as I get about my other hobbies. 
and yet it's the hobby that I love so much that I do it all the time. But I think that's why I don't get as excited, you know, because I do it all the time. It's just kind of an extension of who I am more than like some uh, activity that I don't engage in all the time that I that I get to, you know, uh, dabble around with, play around with and, and see um, what I can learn. Where with cooking, I don't know, I, it's just part of who I am. But I'm really excited this year because I know that if you followed along, you've heard me mention it before, but I had a Chinese cook, a Chinese chef, I should say, uh, stay with me for a few weeks when I was in Maine. And he was wonderful. He used to have two restaurants in Texas, and he was an incredible chef. And I learned quite a few things from him. Now, not as much as I would have liked, but I learned a few things from him. And I have found some really great online resources to learn uh, Asian style cooking. And one of them is The Walks of Life, W-O-K-S, The Walks of Life. It's an amazing site. And I, I want to take some time this winter, even if it's only two, three, hopefully four evenings. And I want to actually get the ingredients that I need because I've played around with this and I haven't used the ingredients um, that they call for. I've kind of done some American substitutes. I was way up there in Maine where nothing was available, but I want to get the ingredients that I need and I want to actually make, you know, authentic Chinese dishes. I guess really they're authentic American Chinese dishes. And I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I encourage you to choose a style of cooking that you want to learn more about, that you want to perfect. It's fine that you want to perfect it. Just don't expect that you're going to perfect it in one winter because, you know, that only leads to disappointment. But something that you want to perfect and um, get involved. Find a resource that you can learn about it, get the stuff that you need, and spend some time in the kitchen, one or two evenings a month, or you know, even just two or three evenings throughout the winter season, and learn a little bit about it. And then next season you can expand. Um, so you know, you're always growing and always learning more. And cooking is an amazing skill to have. And then in the spirit of staying in the kitchen where I love to be, I want to expand my baking skills this winter. Baking is a terrific uh, slow living hobby for the winter time. It really is. And it may come as a surprise to you, or if you know me, it may not, but I'm not a great baker. I put out some really amazing recipes on the blog um, that I have baked and they're really good and that's how baking goes for me. I'm either really good at it, you know, or I'm not. And I want to expand those skills, particularly in the area of bread. So when I'm talking about baking, I mean, it's very much like what I just said about cooking. Find something that you want to do. Find something that interests you. Find a skill that you want to perfect. Maybe you want to make the perfect cake or decorate the perfect cake. Or maybe you want to make the most fabulous, healthy breakfast muffins. Good for you, breakfast muffins. Not like what we Americans think of as muffins where it's really just cake without icing. <laughs> Maybe you want to learn how to make the very best fudge that anyone has ever eaten. Pick something and then work on that skill. For me, it's bread baking. Now I'm pretty disappointed because if you follow along on social media, you know that I worked very hard at getting a sourdough starter going because sourdough is something I want to learn. And I finally got my sourdough where it was at just the right place for baking and I was ready to run with it. But the sourdough starter went to North Carolina in the move and it is not one of the things that came from North Carolina to Pennsylvania with me when I had to come back here. So right now I would have to start that over. And instead of giving up, 
because I can't really start that over right now when I'm not in my own space. It just isn't reasonable to do that. I'm already trying to accomplish so many things that aren't easy to do in your own space. So I don't need to add that to the list, especially since it took me forever and it was a little bit stressful for me to get it started. So, but instead of giving up, I decided that why can't I learn to bake bread? You know, the traditional way. All the breads, the naan and the baguettes and the sandwich bread and the rye bread and the wheat bread and the burger rolls. And um, I actually am planning on getting started on that in the next couple days. It's a skill that I don't have. And maybe it's, you know, I mean, it certainly is a good skill to have because it's related to sourdough baking. I know that I'm using a yeast that I buy in the store instead of creating my own yeast. And I understand that it doesn't have the same health benefits as creating my own yeast, but the principles are the same. The principles of using the yeast are the same and homemade bread is still exponentially healthier for you than store-bought bread because of the ingredients that are in it. I mean, they're basic, they're simple, and it's not full of preservatives. Think about how many preservatives they have to put in a loaf of bread so that it can sit on a shelf. It goes from a bakery to a truck to being delivered to sitting on a shelf for how long? And then you purchase it and you bring it home and you have it for how long? That thing is full of preservatives. And the homemade breads that I'm gonna make are not. So I'm pretty excited about them. And even though I can't do my beloved sourdough, I'm feeling good about furthering my bread making journey. And I encourage you to pick something that you want to bake and further your journey in that area this winter. Okay, you guys, we've got two more, and both of these are, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm excited about them. I'm excited about all of this. How many times have I said I'm excited about this so far? So the first one is preserving food off season. You know, we think about preserving food and we think about our very first, you know, little spring harvests, maybe peas and beans and stuff like that. And then we think about our um, fall harvest where we have kind of the abundance of the garden. And we think about um, our fall gardens in the climate that I'm in, it's gonna be pretty much the same as the spring garden, right? Um, but there, there's so much more than that. There is like so much more than that. And there's things that I'm not even gonna talk about today, you know, preserving meat and, and um, making uh, dairy products and all of that. I'm really just not even gonna get into that, although it would be a great time to buy some cream and learn how to make, you know, butter or um, something, right? Even a small batch of cheese. I remember making um, a farmer's cheese from some raw milk that I bought and, and, it, and herbing it, and it was terrific. You can learn, and keep the food preservation skills going by learning things like that. But you can also preserve uh, food off season. And what I mean by that is um, I just went to the farmer's market and one of the farmers there had uh, French breakfast radishes that were so divine. They were so divine. He actually had uh, several different kinds of radishes, but I love French breakfast radishes, so I bought those and I brought them home and I uh, quick pickled them. Um, and I am going back to the farmer's market this weekend and I'm going to buy some more and I'm going to quick pickle some more because I love quick pickled food. It's very, very good for your gut health and I don't have any quick pickled food right now. So I can preserve that food until I have my own radishes in the spring. And just today, I was at the grocery store and they had tomatoes, right? They, in the, in the clearance produce, they had a couple big packs of tomatoes for $1.69. I mean, there was like six, seven, eight tomatoes in each of these packs for $1.69 and they were in really good shape. Now, I know they're not garden fresh tomatoes, 
but I don't have any garden fresh tomatoes and because I was moving um, at the end of the summer I didn't preserve I didn't grow any last year and I didn't preserve any I didn't even buy any from the Amish and preserve them so these tomatoes I'm gonna core them and I'm gonna uh, freeze them individually and then I'm gonna throw them in you know gallon sized storage baggies and stick them in the freezer because this winter they are gonna make really amazing homemade pizza sauce. Now, they're not garden fresh tomatoes, so it's not going to be garden fresh pizza sauce, but it's still gonna be homemade pizza sauce. And again, still better for you. So there are always things that you can do. Um, in one of the food preservation groups that I belong to online, there was just a woman who got 30 pineapples for $28. So she snagged them all up and she took them home and she's gonna can them. And she's going to have that pineapple juice. Uh, cranberries are another really good example. They're only available at this time of year, right? They're available for a season and the clearance sales have started on them. Whatever's left in the stores, they're clearing out. You can make cranberry sauce, you can make cranberry chutney, you can make cranberry juice. These are all things that you can preserve to have to use throughout the rest of the year or even, you know, just for however long and um, you can improve your food preservation skills while you're doing it. It's a great slow living winter hobby. And then finally, there's photography. Of all of the hobbies that I'm gonna share with you today, this one is more tailored to me, maybe personally me, than the others, right? Because the others are things that a lot of people are interested in and not everybody is interested in photography. But it's an amazing slow living hobby and winter is the perfect time to take a class. There are free online courses. There are inexpensive online courses. Um, just anything to just kind of get in there and do a little bit with it. It's a skill that I want to have because of the blog. Um, right now, um, my photos are hit or miss. And because I photo a lot of food, it's really actually kind of hard because food is very difficult to photo. Um, and also with the videos, there's so much that I want to do with videos. There's, I, I want to do choreographed videos on slow living. And I don't know if you've ever seen any of those but they're, um, they're detailed, they're a lot of work, and I need to be in my own space to do them. But in the meantime, I can be learning how to do them. I can be learning more about the art of photography. And so you may have something like that, that you are very, very drawn to, that you want to hone your skill, and this is the time to take an online course to, uh, if there's a course in your community, better yet, or just to read up on it and practice. Practice, practice, and practice. And that's what I plan on doing with photography. Um, I am fortunate because I do have some equipment. I don't have a great deal of equipment, but I have some equipment, and it's pretty decent equipment. So I can kind of jumpstart from there, but the first time that I ever engaged in a photography hobby. Well, the very first time was a course that I took in college, but that was the intro course and it was all about developing the film and, and all of that. And, um, you know, that's not something that we really do much anymore. Although if I had a black room, a dark room, a dark room, I'd be into it. But anyway, the first time that I really engaged in photography outside of that college course was with my phone. And a lot of people start that way. You can just start with your phone. You can have tons of fun with it. And I'm gonna tell you every once in a while, you are gonna get a shot that is gonna be outstanding, which is really not that different than when you're using expensive equipment because all your shots aren't fabulous. But every once in a while, you get a shot that just takes your breath away and it's so much fun. So I encourage you to find something that draws you in that you want to learn more about this winter and use it to step away from your busy life and to improve your slow living skills. We all need to slow down. We all need to do things that are good for our health, for our mental health, for our physical health, and for our spiritual health. And one of 
the ways to do that is to step outside of our busy, demanding lives, away from the things that are vying for our attention, and to put ourselves in a situation where we can focus fully on what we're doing at the moment, where we can be mindful of what we're doing at the moment. Because it changes, it, I should say it interrupts our typical thought patterns. And that is very, very, very healthy. So I hope that me sharing my passions with you, I feel like I just kind of talked about myself a lot, but I hope that me sharing my passions with you for the things that I love and just my passion for engaging in slow living hobbies, particularly in the winter, is an inspiration to you in one way or another. And if it is, I would love to hear how it has inspired you in the comments below. That would be a great blessing to me. So please let me know. And thank you so much for being here with me today. You and I are going to get together again, and we're going to do it really soon.